At Toronto Pearson, the icing operations are truly what allows this vital global aviation hub to be a 24-7, 365 day a year, world-class airport. The central de-icing facility, or CDF, is the largest and most technically advanced de-icing facility in the world, with the capability of de-icing more than 500 aircraft in one day. The challenge of processing aircraft through the de-icing facility as quickly as possible continues to increase with the growth in air travel. Safety, while sustaining performance, is paramount to the success of the Toronto CDF. Even the smallest amounts of contamination present on aircraft flight surfaces can be critical and will degrade lift capabilities and control during takeoff. The CDF is ideally located to provide quick access to runways, allowing aircraft to launch immediately after the de-icing process has been completed. With a 65-acre footprint, the central de-icing facility has six de-icing pads. Each pad is divided into a staging bay and a de-icing bay and each bay is further divided into three aircraft lead-in lines, north, south, and center. This configuration provides maximum flexibility and throughput for any and all types of aircraft. Six wide-body aircraft can be de-iced simultaneously using just the center lines, and 12 narrow-body aircraft utilizing the north and south lines of each bay. The coordination and flow of aircraft in and out of the CDF is overseen by a combination of positions. De-icing movement coordinators, or DMCs, within the control cab will direct all operations under the leadership of the shift manager. The assignments of these coordinators vary, but during intense winter or irregular operations, the bay manager, pad controller and de-icing coordinator function to execute de-icing operations with the precision of a well-orchestrated symphony. Each aircraft preparing to depart Pearson during winter operations is identified by ground control and tagged with an electronic flight progress strip. This information is electronically transmitted to the bay manager in the ice house, and the aircraft is assigned a de-icing bay based on a number of factors such as pad availability, aircraft size, resources available, and departure runways in operation. The role of pad control is to coordinate the entry and exit of aircraft to and from the de-icing area. As the aircraft approaches the CDF inbound control point, pad control will instruct the flight crew on which bay to proceed into. Iceman is the de-icing movement coordinator who controls the aircraft while they are within the confines of their designated de-icing pad. The CDF operations are divided into north and south pads. South Iceman controls de-icing pads 1 to 3 and North Iceman controls de-icing pads 4 to 6. Each of the six pads are equipped with electronic signboards that guide the flight crew to the correct de-icing bay and lead the aircraft into a precise parking position on the de-icing pad. During the transition through the de-icing pad, the aircraft is continually monitored and its position is displayed on an automatic guidance system application within the ice house. Once the aircraft arrives at the predefined stop position, the flight crew will confirm to the appropriate iceman that the aircraft has brakes set and is configured for de-icing. All activities taking place during the de-icing process are controlled by de-icing coordinators, callsign Zulu. The de-icing specialists and de-icing movement coordinators choose from a number of pre-choreographed de-icing vehicle patterns to ensure maximum throughput and efficiency based on the aircraft conditions at the time. The CDF's fleet of de-icing vehicles are some of the most advanced in the world. Each de-icing vehicle is controlled by a single operator seated in an operator's cab located on an elevated boom operating a telescopic spray arm. While removing contamination, the de-icing specialists strive to keep fluid consumption as low as possible, ensuring the minimum amount of fluids necessary to achieve the task at hand are used. Quality control inspections are performed by our highly trained technical inspectors who provide oversight and coaching during engines on de-icing operations, ensuring safe practices are adhered to. Each de-icing vehicle carries two types of de-icing fluid. Type 1 de-icing fluid is a heated glycol and water mixture and is easily identified by its orange color. Fluid temperature is maintained by heaters inside the tanks of each de-icing vehicle. The heated de-icing fluid mixture is able to break the bond between the frost, ice or snow and the aircraft flight control surfaces. 
The force at which the fluid is applied removes the contamination. Type 4 anti-icing fluid is applied to prevent any ice or snow from adhering to the flight surfaces immediately following the de-icing process and prior to departure during active precipitation conditions. Type 4 is a thickened glycol mixture applied at ambient temperature and is easily identified by its vibrant green color. Operating a de-icing vehicle requires skill and experience. All de-icing specialists receive extensive training at the beginning of each de-icing season and continuous training throughout the season. This strong commitment to training enables specialists to optimize and keep pace with the constant improvements being made with technology and equipment. Efficiency refinements continue to be identified and applied to improve and reduce throughput time, improving our passengers' experience while we continue to strive on our safety performance and reducing unit costs. Once all de-icing vehicles are clear from the aircraft and positioned in their designated safe zones, Iceman tells the flight crew that de-icing has been completed, vehicles are safe, and provides information regarding the types of fluids used and the time of the final application on the aircraft. Both verbal messages and automated electronic messaging signboards provide instructions to advise the flight crew to exit the CDF, at which point the flight crew will be transferred back to the Nav Canada control tower. Using the most advanced equipment and safety systems in the world, the CDF has also made huge strides in protecting the environment, which in turn assists the GTAA in maintaining its ISO 14001 certification. Each de-icing pad is sloped from north to south, allowing the spent glycol to run into designated catch basins. The underground collection system is monitored and controlled through a computer tracking system. With a simple click of a mouse, environmental technicians can send fluid samples for testing or divert flow to alternate storage tanks based on the glycol concentration of the effluent. The CDF has three massive underground storage tanks. Tank 1 has the capacity of 2.5 million litres. Tanks 2 and 3 each have a capacity to hold 5 million litres each. The level of glycol concentration in the spent fluid is what ultimately determines the method by which it will be released from the underground storage. Glycol that exceeds the release limit stated by the Canadian Water Quality Guidelines is normally disposed of through the sanitary sewer system lines which feed directly into the appropriate wastewater treatment plant. The small amount of glycol which does not flow into the catch basins is quickly vacuumed from the pad surface by powerful glycol recovery vehicles. Snow cleared from the de-icing pads also contains surface glycol and is piled in an area that drains into the appropriate holding tanks. The entire 65 acres of the CDF site is lined with a geomembrane to further ensure glycol does not escape into the natural waterways. Located under the concrete and asphalt surfaces, the membrane assists to redirect any fluids into the underground storage tanks. Toronto Pearson's central de-icing facility continues to be at the forefront of innovation and application using advanced technologies. We are committed to providing safe and efficient de-icing operations, maximizing aircraft throughput times, minimizing flight delays, while protecting the environment.